after many, 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 many years of goading, trying to get him up here. Let's give it up for his first time ever on the comedy scene, JB! Thank you very much. Matt's right. This is it. This is my first time. And uh, I'm so impressed with Matt and Pat, these guys in the room that do this every week, week in, week out. He works with kids. He goes to school. And they come up here and they do comedy. I'm so a fan of Matt that I went and bought my own Matt Wiegand glasses. Check this out. I got my Matt Wiegand glasses. No, I just looked at these guys, and for years now I've been saying, I can't do that. And the weird part about it is, if you look at a pharmacist, it takes eight years of college to become a pharmacist. And when I'm at the pharmacy, and I see that person in their white lab coat take the big bottle of pills, and pour some into the little bottle of pills, and hand that to me. And they go, I could totally be a pharmacist. I could do that. I, I can do that. You know, um, they did add something to their job. Have you guys been through this where you go to pick up something from the pharmacist and they say, the pharmacist would like to speak with you now. Okay, and they don't even give you your medicine because they know you'll run off with it. They hand it over this way and you have to do the walk of shame over to the little window and the pharmacist walks up and says, okay, so these are 800 milligram Motrins. You'll take them three times a day, with food. Any questions? I just read that label. I can do that. I do not need you to go, oh, hold on. May cause drowsiness, do not operate heavy equipment. Okay? I can do that. What if other professions did that? What if bankers were like pharmacists and you go up to the teller and the teller says, oh, the banker would like to speak with you. And they hand your $100 bill over and the banker comes up and says, Okay, this is a hundred dollar bill. Uh, if you find something that costs a dollar, you can buy a hundred of them. <laughs> and uh, you will trust in God, along with the rest of us. And I would recommend that you pluribus your unum. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can do that. But I've been standing here saying I can't do this because I figured out the difference. It's very hard for a banker or a pharmacist to, to humiliate themselves, which we kind of have the opportunity to do up here. So um, that's kind of been the goal, you know. I mean, when I looked up here, I said I can't do that. I said I'd rather, you know, drink this beer through a straw through my nose. You know, I'd rather have menstrual cramps and push a bowling ball out through my ass. <laughs> Ladies, respect. <laughs> Much respect. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I do have one thing, you know, the difference between me and you right now is I have a microphone and you're not shitting your pants. But because I have a microphone, I can make helicopter sounds. <laughs> oh, go straight for the helicopter sounds. So I've, uh, you know, I just want to make an impression. I remember one time trying to make a big impression. I discovered this trick. It was kind of cool. And I was at my friend Gary's house. And uh, Gary's sister, Gail, is just gorgeous. I wanted to make this big impression. So I took an apple and a pencil and I poked a hole in the apple. And that's not the trick, by the way. Then I shoved a firecracker into the apple. The idea being that you throw the apple into the sky and it makes a big explosion, looks like 4th of July fireworks. So I shove the firecracker into the apple. I hold it back. Gary lights it for me. And I heave the apple into the air and with the effort of my heave, I fart. <laughs> really, really loud. And the girl that I'm trying to impress is laughing so hard she doesn't even see the, uh, the firecracker go off. So, uh, Basically, my life's ambition has been to not humiliate myself, which reminds me of the first time that I bought condoms. And I couldn't find them. So I'm walking the rows of the store over and over and over again. I can't find them. And so I'm thinking, God, what am I going to do? Ask the pharmacist? 
<laughs> like, I can imagine this. Console! Oh, what you have here is... No, thank you very much. So I start thinking, okay, where are the damn condoms? And my brain goes nuts. Meat department? Hardware? Toys? No, you know where they are? Where are they? Feminine needs. What the hell? <laughs> much respect, ladies. So, uh, in any case... I was also, you know, wanting to avoid the humiliation at the check stand, so I bought the condoms, and then I bought the Magnum box of condom, condoms. And I walked up, and I threw the first condoms down on the cash register, and I said, oh, those are for the boy. There's mine. So, uh, so anyway, um, I only returned one of the boxes, and it was the small one, so that's good for me. That's my time. Thank you very much for being my first audience. Good luck. Good job, JB. Keep going for JB, everybody. <laughs> Let's throw cramps and push a bowling ball out of your ass. JB, nobody ever explained to you the birds and the bees, did you? Did they? <laughs> the bowling balls don't come out of the ass.